my favorite parts of the broadcast week is right now. We have a full hour to listen to you and Carol Ann talk about your gardens. And I get to sit in my coffee. <laughs> Good morning, Carol Ann. How are you doing? Good morning, Larry. Yeah, honesty. Is that always the best policy? Is that pretty much the way it works <laughs> out here? Kind of, kind of. Yeah. Although I do like listening. I mean, I learn a lot yes, from you. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And you've actually gotten started to get into plants. A little, yeah. A little bit. I know. It's, little, it's like one of those. I know. And it's funny. And I think that happens actually to a lot of people, you know, a lot more than, you know, than people realize that, you know, it's like, you know, well, no, I never really, I don't, I don't, they might say, no, I don't garden, but you have, (laughs) you know, eight house plants in your, in your house. Well, those are just. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, but you care for them. You, you know. So I have a question for yeah. you. Okay. Because I, uh, to be honest, I think well, what you say is I'll retire and what, mm-hmm. maybe I'll be outside more and so I get you know do something. Yeah. What are you going to do when you retire? I mean, you've been doing it all your life. Probably still do that kind of stuff. It's the same I mean, thing, Because huh? that's what they, you know, what they say. You know, your hobbies. You know, if your hobby is your work, yeah, your work yeah, that's your, true. Yeah. That's true. It's not as yeah. you know, not as much of a, a burden if you love what you do. You, you know, just so. don't have to answer questions. I anymore. just, I, I just wouldn't have to be, you know, <laughs> on a on a time clock of it, and you know, yeah, do yeah, it yeah, as yeah. I wish. So, on that. do you know one thing I am confused by What's though? That? How much to water a cactus? Because I'm afraid. It's yeah, too they much. they don't need they they don't need much water. Um, best thing to do especially if you know if you're getting those little cactuses and they're great little gifts you know the the little tiny ones and or, I can't tell or if mine's for growing collectible, or not. Um, well you've only had yours a few weeks yeah yeah so I, I wouldn't worry too much yeah, about okay. it <clears throat> but they come in these little tiny pots or sometimes they're, they're sometimes they're actually pretty little pots um, and if you're not transplanting them right away you can see that if the soil is getting too dry it actually pulls away from the edge of the pot it shrinks down mm-hmm, that's not so, good right right if if it does that you really kind of get it got it Kind of got to get it wet enough, <laughs> say that three times fast, um, to where it expands back out. And then make sure it doesn't do that again. You know, so then you're looking at probably watering. Uh, in the little tiny pots, you're talking a, a tablespoon or so once a week. A week, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I actually, I, I just, I actually, except for the, like, the um, aloes that are outside, I have a brand new little succulent cactus kind of little thing too because it was in such a cute little pot it was you know i had to i had to buy it because it was the pot looked like a little converse tennis shoe so do the cactus that they sell in pots grow Mm -hmm. native in florida Eh, probably not so the rain that we have is probably not Eh, but they'll 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 handle it most all of them will take care of because i have it near the screen in the porch right so the rain on a heavy rain day it's getting some yeah that's fine that's fine so yeah it's yeah i can't tell you it's growing yet though i haven't yeah well i I can't swear to it i wouldn't worry about yeah it's only how big will it get Hard to say. Depends on, you know, if you keep moving kind it up it in a pot yeah. and things like that, if you don't kill it and all kinds of fun stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, those little, those little cactus, and actually there's a, there have a co-worker whose um, girlfriend, like, got into, suddenly got into succulents. And he said, she's got this, this like, bookcase, plant rack kind of thing. It's huge. And he's just, it's, like, covered with it. She's got... All kinds of different ones. She, he, she was. She spends far too much money on succulents. So oh, really? So she's just sort of suddenly got into this collection of the succulents because there's so many different ones, and some of them with really fun names too. That are you know, it, it might have this this Latin name, but its little fun name is is baby toes. <laughs> Because the that little ends name? of it, that's the name of a plant. And then there's <laughs> another one called Ogre's Ears. And I keep thinking I mean Do they have, look like those things? Oh, uh, you could say yeah. that, yeah, that they do. I mean, and, you know, you get donkey, you know, donkey tail. Um, there's some hanging basket ones that are popular when you see them online that are, um, it's, I'm trying to think if they call it like chain of porpoise or, or porpoise plant. The little, the little leaflets right. look like porpoise? little porpoise. Really? Um, wow. We don't carry that one. We carry the, the bananas, bunch of bananas is what it's called. And they look like little tiny oh, green really? bananas that hang down in a, in a oh, you know, chain. Cool. And then there's chain of pearls and things like that that are little round 
you could either call them pearls or peas, you know, because they're uh-huh. not white. Uh-huh. Um, you know, they're, they're just all kinds of different ones. Uh-huh. I mean, I haven't, I don't, I don't collect them. I think they make neat gifts, and they're neat for those who really do like to collect them. You can use them in fairy gardens. You can use them, you know, just as as uh, low maintenance indoor house plants. You know, the office plant uh, because they don't take a whole lot of care, so they're kind of fun. Yeah. So you know yeah. I'm going out west later this month. Yes, yeah. I don't, I don't know if I can bring taken. one back or not because yeah, I'm on a you, plane. Well, who, who's to say? You, you might, yeah, you might be able to because if they sell them, if they sell they, them, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I dig one out, did I ever tell you that the sand out there is not soft at all? It's almost like no. you're walking on concrete. It's, it's yeah. I was going to say Thank it's you. probably more rock or, or oh, lime. It's, yeah, just um, like this floor, sandstone, sandstone kind of. It's stuff, unbelievable yeah. how hard you you yeah. wouldn't think it. You're looking at because when we look at pictures of the Sahara Desert. Mm-hmm. That looks soft. I don't know. I've right. never been there. But right. this, this is the Mojave Desert. The, you're right. And I couldn't. And I know nothing about it other than it was hard. It's that it's hard. Pa- yeah, it's yeah. hard pan because it doesn't get any rain on it. And just all packed in there. I yeah. Guess. It just yeah. It just has gotten. Uh, and and the what the sand is made out of. You figure Florida is was underwater, so we are sea bottom. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> why it's so soft. If you think about it, yeah, that's yeah why we have the sugar sands and stuff, stuff uh-huh. like that. It's just the same thing as yeah the sea bottoms. But then you get over to Orman, and you have that section there that is like it's it's shell, it's crushed shell. You know, the sand at Orman so Beach. So think about that for a second. They say that because of us driving mm-hmm. cars and everything, the water is going to rise and Florida is going to be underwater. But what you're saying is it was underwater. We already were underwater. Yeah. Yeah. So what? Okay. Yeah, we were underwater once, yeah. Yeah, all except for the ridge. Which is where we are, right? Aren't we on no, the ridge? No, we're not on the ridge. Oh, we're not? No, we're not. Um, the ridge is down there, um, like where Lake, Wid- Lake Ridge Winery, it's down there. I think it's in Lake County. Uh, there's, I want to say it's a three-mile wide or three-mile long section that was so that was an island never, at one time that never went underwater oh really my understanding that's, that's what I cool was i didn't know that i mean there might be there i i could be wrong there could be other spots but you figure florida's not real high <laughs> yeah we right we, here you know how uh, high we are right I, here uh, what are we 100 <laughs> 100 feet, and I'm surprised we're that far over sea level. But well, actually, the, this part is 100 feet. If you go down to 200, it's 80 feet. So we're actually 20 feet 20 higher feet above than right. 200. Well, and you can see that when you look out yeah. over. Yeah. And so that may have even been, you know. And there's a few areas in um, in the in the county and and throughout this, you know, it, well, a lot in the county where you you actually do have some areas where where they're just they're light hills it, that are higher. Have you ever been to Sunken Gardens? By the way, we had a piece this early. Probably this when I was about seven. I never <laughs> knew it's a sinkhole oh. that the guy who owned it was so disapp- disappointed his real estate just sunk to the ground. He decided to just plant things just there to, just to turn it into. And it's been like a yeah. hundred. Well, maybe 50 years. I can't remember how long it's been there, but the, the guy's it's, been... It's... Maybe 100? I don't remember what it's 75, pro- over 50, probably. But there's so many probably plants down there yeah. because it's because it's sunken in mm-hmm. that they don't necessarily get d- affected by hurricanes or right, freezes. Right, right. It doesn't... Yeah, it probably fills... It has problems when... If it gets water. Probably, you know, a yeah, lot of yeah. extensive water. Because um, for I some reason, I remember many years ago that they'd said that... Uh, it like had some damage. Like five hundred species of plants Different, and fifty thousand yeah. plants. Right. And well, you know, right up the road here in Williston, Morriston, hmm. the um, Williston? Cedar Lakes, Cedar Lakes, and uh, Cedar Wood, Cedar Lakes and Woods. Oh, I don't know. It's a sinkhole um, that's been done. Same kind of a thing. Same kind of a thing. Oh, really? uh, not a sinkhole. It's a uh, was a lime rock mine. Oh, okay. So okay. yeah, and they they have events. It's open to the public. It huh. yeah, has an ad, has an admission. They got all kinds of stuff planted in there. Um, I wish they had more native stuff planted, but it is kind of interesting yeah. when you uh, in uh, Gainesville in uh, what do you call Devil's Mill Hopper? Right. Have you ever gone down in that thing? Uh, no, I haven't. Mostly because I hear so the ba- mosquitoes can be bad. That's what. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was my experience. <laughs> but there are a ton of plants for the for the plant. Oh enthusiast. yeah. Enthusiast. I mean, there's some. It, it's like a different world down there. Because they're, it's so tr- it's like a I don't know what you see like in a tropical rainforest movie. Oh or something. Yeah, 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 where you've got the ferns and things yeah, like that yeah. on the on the walls and yeah. that. Uh, where 
mosquitoes. But the mosquitoes do like it. Oh, though, yeah. Well, because you don't have the air movement. Um, but see? Of course, nobody else, unless I turn it what around it? so you can see the camera. That's the Cedar Lakes and, and Woods. And where is that? That's It's in, what is it? It's off of 27. So that must uh, be Williston, then, if it's off yeah. 27. Okay. Yeah, Williston, yeah. But they've got, I mean, it's really kind of cool because it's a, it's a former. There's uh, a lot of stuff around here. We just, it yeah, just need to explore neat, more. I probably, I probably don't want sound. Look so. at that fancy thing you've got going there. Yeah, what is I that? Make sure we're on mute. Landing on Earth? Oh, you know what we did the other day? A little closer to home? What's that? We went to that art park in Tuscawilla. Oh, And they okay. have plants there. Right. And so I was actually taking a picture of the statue. Oh, uh, right. But I saw a hummingbird. Oh, nice. Fifth time in my life I've seen a hummingbird. Nice. But nice. not close. It was far right, away. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, hummingbirds, hummingbirds are cool, but... Yeah, but they got, but then uh, Robin went to take a picture of it, and it said, I'm out of here. Oh, uh, yeah, it never fails. And so I mean, by the time you get the camera it ready, took off. whatever it is you're trying to photograph flies away, whether it's butterflies, whether it's, you know, you, you spot a lizard doing something cool, they take off. But the only thing you can photograph is frogs. They don't move <laughs> that fast. Oh, I, I could have had a na uh, natural geographic, national geographic oh. moment. My lizard uh -huh. ate a, what it, was it, a caterpillar. Okay. And it... Oh, I posted. Did you say I posted on Facebook? Oh I, no, I missed it. I said that. Uh, no, I didn't do the picture. Uh, I just said a lizard uh, just ate it. And I said, oh, oh, yeah. "Wonder what time Subway opens?" Yes, yes, yeah. It was so early in the morning. He was having breakfast <laughs> he was early. Having, yeah, well, Subway opens early too for breakfast. He was fed for the rest of the day. That that <laughs> had, that caterpillar was know, just about the size of that exactly lizard. About the size of himself. How would you figure? There's probably not much meat on him. <laughs> yeah, you know, right. probably needed another one. I just can't yeah, imagine that yeah. being tasty. Well, hey. You know, toasted toasted crickets or you know chocolate covered ants and that's how they that's how they uh, uh, made the Lion King a little more gentle. They made in instead of the, did you see the new Lion King? Where I haven't they, seen the new one. I want to. I got have to before. It where they, they, they I guess they didn't want the children watching the thing to see that lions actually eat animals. Right. So they have the, the lion eating bugs. I guess that's acceptable. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like yeah, come on, really. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you may, if you don't want your child the, the the live action kind of thing, maybe that should be, you know, maybe not for children <laughs> under six or something like that. But, you know, <laughs> because it is more realistic. But um, no, it's great uh, great gardening time. Um, yeah, we're still we're still a little bit in that late summer lull. For gardening, so you know, hold on yet on trying to get things going. You might be starting some of your um, vegetable garden cooler season things, or may, you know, get your you know tomatoes in the ground here pretty soon. Some new squash, some new um, green beans, and things like that. Those will get you going into that early early fall, and probably if you think if you count back. Um, October, probably in another couple of weeks, you could be starting some of your actual cooler season, your cabbage and things like that, uh, as little starts in the house. Um, hopefully you bought if you needed trays or you needed things like that earlier on in the season because all the big box stores have boop, made that stuff all disappear, mm -hmm. um, making room for fall and seasonal items you know, like that. They don't pay attention that we are Florida and grow year-round. Uh, we as gardeners have to prepare for that by making sure we buy ahead of time. You know, we're always thinking in the future. When you're a gardener, right, right, you right. always th think forward um, of what's going to be coming up yeah, and what yeah. am I going to need. So, uh, But you can always um, uh, improvise. Yeah, you can still get your starter soil if you've got little yogurt cups, the egg cartons. Um, be careful how you open your crack an egg if you're going to make fry an egg and save the eggshells. Uh, oh, you can okay. plant in those. Um, you know, there's all kinds of different things. You don't have to have peat pots, you know, to start plants in. You can even use uh, newspaper and, you know, wet the newspaper and make like a newspaper pot you know, that biodegrade uh, in the ground. When we were at that garden or the park, whatever, mm -hmm. the other day, we were thinking about maybe one day we could do like a podcast with you mm -hmm. where it would be sort of like a YouTube special <laughs> where you're kind of explaining what we're looking at. Because I said, I was wondering why I never see hummingbirds, but out there, there was a hummingbird. So it must have been something there about were, that there plant. Were, right. There was, yeah. But there don't was ask me what kind of plant it was because I don't know. Right. Yeah, it was some. It was had to have been a nectar-producing. I wonder plant if I show because Robin did a video of it. Maybe I could show you the video, 
and then you can tell me what kind of plant it is. See, hey, see what it is. That's not a bad idea. Let me find we it. Can give it. We can give it a shot. But um, so with yeah with the um, hummingbird yeah we're attracting hummingbirds we're doing all kinds of different things but out there in the um in your gardens and things like that if you you know say last year there were some plants cool weather plants that you couldn't find in the big box stores in your garden centers wherever that you like to go you know look for seed or do it mail order get your seed yourself for some of those things now realize some things if you're buying and it says zone nine it might not necessarily be a um, Florida zone nine. So check and make sure where it's coming from because you figure California, Arizona and things, their climate is not the same as ours even though it says zone nine. It could be totally different. So um, you know, do a little research before you order your seed. Okay, so I have the, the video on here. I, if I put the sound up, you also hear me telling Rob, look, there's a there's a, there's a hummingbird. hummingbird. See, this me. See? I see them. I've never. Yeah, it looks like a hamelia. See those plants right there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Little orange, little orange flowers on those. Yeah, let me put it back to the way you can see them again. So this is at the park, right next door to the train station in Ocala. I'll keep the sound off there. Now maybe you can see them better now. The actual plants. Yeah, it looks like yeah. yeah just in the thing, tr it looks like hamelia hummingbird bush. That's what it's actually called, the hummingbird bush. Oh, you're yeah, looking at it closer? Okay, here. Use this mic. Yeah, that's what that that's what that looks like. Little little orange flowers. Then we can't enlarge it. No. But that's yeah, that's looks like looks like hamelia. I'd have to see it up close, but you gotta look really close to see the actual hummingbird, by the way. Right. Oh. <laughs> in that picture. But yeah. Oh sure, because they're so tiny and so quick. I, is it a sign that I'm getting old that I'm fascinated by stuff like that now? No, it it's well <laughs> maybe No, maybe it's just that you've taken the time to slow down a little bit, that you guys maybe. have started bicycling and I mean because yeah, you've been yeah, into yeah, you know, yeah. art and things like that, but just like the same thing with the plants. Yeah, you, know, you got a little plant now. There's now that you're outside, maybe a little bit more than what you were just a couple of years ago. Yeah, um, yeah. That taken more into that activity. Yeah, you start to see things that are out there. Yeah, yeah. See now, what you know is when you know you get when you're really into things. When it's like, oh, wait a minute, stop! Look, this lizard's about to eat some. Yeah, then, <laughs> <laughs> then you then you start to sound like me. Well, I told you <laughs> what happened with the the wasp that was flying toward me. And oh. he dropped a grasshopper. Oh, no. That, yeah. I was walking on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even in a wooded area, really. And here comes, I can see it, too. Here comes, yeah. and he just dropped what he was carrying. Oh. And so he could make a, make his getaway. Getaway. Probably, and yeah. I looked down, and I saw this the dead grasshopper. Grass and you know what? Sure enough, if I just stood back a little bit, the wasp came back, got he it. Grabbed and it, and took off. Continued yeah. on his way. He probably had to drop it be so that he could make his escape. Right, right. Yeah, you because know, suddenly there's there's a mountain in front of me. I can't, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get the altitude. I'm going to crash. I'm going to crash. So. <laughs> drop the load, come back and pick it up again and make it a different kinda route. It's kind of cool to see that yeah, stuff. It is. Yeah, it is. So. So hey, phone lines are open if you want to call Carol Ann about anything. It doesn't have to be a question, but it can be. Sure. Or maybe you just want to tell a story about a wasp that dropped a grasshopper near you. Or, or whatever. <laughs> a grasshopper near you. <laughs> um and at the bottom of the hour we do have four um gift packages, each with a twenty dollar Bob Wines uh gift certificate, $20 Bob Goins gift certificate, and twenty dollars for timeout billiards and uh grill. And I think we'll go ahead and today, even though it just came in today, I got I got a book in. What did you get today? We got we got a book in. That's a nice uh, oh fruit, fruit trees fruit trees for every garden. Um, it's a, an organic approach to growing apples, pears, peaches, plums, citrus, and more. The author is out of California, which makes things you know so hard. I was telling you, so hard to find stuff. Yeah, you know, um, right, right, right. Or that they, you know these publishers want us to do things you know, promote books and things like that, but we're in Florida. Florida is so much different than everywhere else. But this one just looks like that there was will probably be enough information that you can take out of it because we do grow fig, we do grow peaches and things like that. That there's gra uh, not just your pruning and things like that, which is, excuse me, across the board information. Uh -huh. So it's a nice looking book. Yeah, we'll give that one away too. And you have a phone call? All right. Good morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Yes, good morning, guys. Good morning, Hugh. 
say, uh, you know, speaking of wasps, I, you know, I, I kill wasps. I got a spray because I'm, I'm afraid of them and, you know, for myself and my animals. But I was just wondering, do wasps pollinate like bees and maybe I should be killing them? They do pollinate. They are part of the pollinators. Only time I really go after wasps is if they're right by, like, say, my front door where they may come in my house or I may agitate them and they'd be more apt to sting. I mean, nobody likes to get stung by a wasp. It hurts, you know, and, yeah. and if you happen to be allergic, that can be a health issue. But things like your mud daubers, they're not going to bother you. Uh, there's red wasps out there that are quite large, but they're solitary wasps. They're not going to mess with you unless you happen to pinch them between, you know, your body, you know, kind of thing that one gets caught, you know, that you're working. So if you can not spray them, uh, it's going to be better. You know, obviously, if they're in an area where they um, are going to come out, when you walk past on a regular basis, that's different. Um, you know, if they're there up where you need to open your shed doors and just that action of opening the shed could bring them out that could cause a stinging issue, that's about the only time I, I get rid of anything like that. Yeah, you know, speaking of those mud dobbers, you know, they're everywhere in the garage and wherever. Mm -hmm. how, how, how come bees don't have that? Why, why is it just a wasp that's a, a mud dauber? Um, just that's, that's just that species. That's the way that one does. It's, um, you know, it, it stings its, it makes its little mud thing. It stings its, uh, prey, shoves that in there, deposits some eggs, you know, and that's, you know, it, it's, that's where it puts its young. You know, the bees make combs and, you know, just they do in a different manner. Uh, then you have your paper wasps that make those, um, little papery, Deals that'll hang there, and the egg cell, shell, the egg sack is up inside of there. Uh, you have hornets that make those giant, almost look like paper mache, um, yeah, kind of things. Yeah, so they're yeah. all different, all different ones. Now, you know, hornets you just find something like that that that's that large. That's a danger of being stung. Or even the paper wasp nest, if they're small, I just I don't even spray them. I, I or I may spray them, knock them down, squish it. Uh, only, but only if it's in somewhere. Um, where it's my regular travels. I'm going to open and close that door or I'm going to do something that's going to disturb them and cause them to be defensive and want to come out and sting. Uh, that, that mud dauber thing, that's just the one time they have their eggs and then the, the little ones hatch or whatever they do and fly away and then that, that's the end. That's the yeah. end of the life of the mud dauber, right? That's, that's the end of that uh, tube. Um, I don't think they come back and revisit them. Now, the, the tubes on the mud daubers, because they are... Um, they're kind of ugly, you know. And the, you know, if it's on the side of the house yeah, or something stain, like that, yeah. leaves a stain from that from that sand on there and whatever their saliva that they make that um, out of. That those kind of things, I knock them down. Um, but you know, it's it's not that I'm trying to kill them. I just don't want them there right, and de right, doing right. damage to the the exterior of the house. All right, we have some prizes to give away, and we would yeah. love to hear from you. And uh, the first one who says they'd like the book will get the book and okay. and a prize package. And then we have three more of the uh, gift certificates for Time Out and Bob Wines. All right, excellent. If you want to call right now, take a shot at this six two two nine six two two. The first caller gets the uh, the book and the other prizes, and everybody else would just get the the gift certificates. There you go. We'll be right back. This is WOCA Ocala. Fox News, I'm Lillian Wu. Democratic presidential hopeful Joe Biden airs his first TV ad in the key caucus state of Iowa today. We know in our bones this election is different. The stakes are higher, the threat more serious. We have to beat Donald Trump. And all the polls agree Joe Biden is the strongest Democrat to do the job. The latest FEC numbers, though, show Biden fundraising as of July at $22 million, trailing Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg. We're learning that accused sex trafficker Jeff Epstein signed some important documents just before he died. Court records show Jeffrey Epstein's estate has been valued at more than $577 million, but details of who will get that money are still up in the air. Epstein signed a new will on August 8th, just two days before he killed himself in the Manhattan Federal Jail. Fox's Tanya J. Powers. America is listening to Fox News. Napa know-how. 
Why should you get a five-quart jug of Napa conventional oil plus a Pro Select oil filter for $15.99? Because the dog days of summer are just as hard on your engine as they are on you. So get your five-quart jug of Napa conventional oil plus a Pro Select oil filter for just $15.99. Quality parts, helpful people. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. General States pricing. Sales prices do not include applicable state local taxes or recycling fees. Offer ends 831.19. Pros like you expect more out of the brands you use every day. Lowe's gets it. It's why we stock the best brands so you can get the job done right every time. And now we're offering pro customers a chance to give one of those brands a try for free. Right now, pros can get up to 10 gallons of Valspar paint absolutely free and experience firsthand how Valspar delivers a smooth application and reliable color for all your touch-up work. Take your next paint job to the next level. Do it right for less. Start with Lowe's. Valid in Orlando and Phoenix stores only. Requires return authorization number. See ProDesk for details. Here is your one-minute news brief. Seven Puerto Rican health care workers say supervisors at a government-run clinic in Haines City warned them to stop speaking Spanish or they would get fired. The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission says English-only rules violate federal law. Foreign-born residents had higher rates of full-time employment than those born in the United States last year, according to figures released by the U.S. Census Bureau. Miami Dolphins receiver Kenny Stills objected to recent comments from rapper Jay-Z that kneeling during the national anthem has served its purpose and quote we're done with that unquote in manatee county a cashier at a family dollar store told a knife wielding robber not today and held the robber until deputies arrived a palm beach woman is suing a pet salon because they dyed her golden doodle neon green with pink ears and medieval times orlando is offering a back to school discount just for florida residents and that is your news brief from the source Times of clouds and sun on this Tuesday. There'll be a thunderstorm along the coast this morning and across the interior during the afternoon hours. The high 86 of the coast, 90 inland. Then partly cloudy Tuesday night, low 73 inland, 77 at the coast. For Wednesday, partly sunny skies, high 87 along the coast, 91 inland. Thursday, sunshine mixing with clouds with an afternoon shower or thunderstorm, high 87 at the coast, 91 inland. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Ocala Magazine is the city magazine distributed throughout Ocala, Marion County, and the villages, providing award-winning coverage of important issues for almost 40 years. Hi, I'm Philip Glassman, publisher of Ocala Magazine. Ocala Magazine offers a platform for branding opportunities for your business or events while covering the latest in local lifestyle throughout print, digital, and social media. Listen every Friday at 10 a.m. on WOCA. The College of Central. If you haven't been to Bob Wines Camellia Gardens recently, then you owe yourself a trip, if only to see their huge selection of trees and the low, low prices. Bob has hundreds of trees, dozens of sizes and varieties, and best of all, you can select a large tree up to seven, maybe eight feet for just $49.99. And get this, you get a second tree just like it for half price. Other great deals this week, direct from Bob Wines Camellia Gardens .net. Listen, all indoor foliage, 20% off. A jumbo four-pack of veggies for the low, low price of $3.99. Semi-dwarf fashion azaleas, just $3.99. And listen, those famous Woodstock chimes, Ocala loves them, and they're 30% off. Get your share of the warm weather deals, so hurry on over to Bob Wines Camellia Gardens on Southeast 38th Street, daily till 4, Saturdays till 3, in the same blooming place since 1952. All right, 25 minutes before 10 o'clock. It's, uh, let's return now to Carol Ann Baldwin. The show is called In the Garden with Carol Ann. This is the gardening show. If you're new to it, thank you for tuning in. If you'd like to be part of it, it's easy. Just got to call us, 622-9622. Carol Ann will talk to you, answer your questions, or just chat with you about what's going on in your garden. And there's a couple of things coming up. This month, even because today's what the today's the twentieth, and my grandson's not here in this area, so he can't hear this. I already wished him happy birthday twice. Um, happy birthday, Luke! You're twelve. 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 Wow! Yeah. Wow! Is that oh. your first grandchild? My only grandchild. Your only yeah. grandchild. My only so grandchild. you've been a grandma yeah. twelve years. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And you're younger kid. than me. Yep. Wow. Yeah. You know, you know, you know. I was thinking when I was listening to the Bob Wines commercial. <clears throat> What's that? For some reason, I always thought that to be a gardener, 
You needed to be starting everything from seed, otherwise you were cheating. Oh, but yeah. I've learned, or you know, from doing the show and listening right. to Bob Wines and all that, that you just buy it already made. <laughs> so well, yeah, I mean, the- yeah, you you let somebody else do that part, <laughs> and and even you just even keep the it alive. growers, even even growers, because there's certain things that are easier done by cutting or air layering versus seed. Sometimes the seed takes a long time to germinate or just doesn't germinate uh, with a high percentage of success. So taking cuttings or things like that makes it a lot easier. Or, or plants like crepe myrtles who shoot up these little water shoots of taking those and putting them and rooting them is actually a lot easier mm-hmm. than trying to go from seed. And, and some things just take a long time from seed to reach a mature level that'll bloom or that you can graft it to the other that you're needing to get you know a hardier that sounds like skill you know. right and there. some of the yeah that takes skill and practice grafting, the grafting and things like that and but um things like things like starting from cuttings and and that don't really take a whole lot of skill um it's just the knowledge of when to take the cutting from what part of the plant to take the cutting, how much, and and how to go from there. But it doesn't take it doesn't take a whole lot. If you um, normally we're doing most of our uh, cuttings would be in say like June. So you've had the flush of growth in the early spring, but it has started to become solid, become what we call semi hardwood. So it's still pliable, but be not as pliable as that new little shoot that just is real soft and tender right, it's starting right, right. to get some rigidity to it to where it's you know a little hardier but still has growth you know ready to do and that's where we do most of our cuttings from and sometimes even you're getting your cuttings before this plant would um, be producing seed maybe so you're getting those started ahead of time. Uh-huh, you uh-huh. get your cuttings, you know, using a root, rooting hormone for most of your things is going to just make it's going to help that process go along a little faster. Uh, never contaminate your jar of rooting hormone. Always dump a little on the paper plate. Don't dunk right in the. I want to ask you some I heard on the Saturday show that comes out of Orlando. I think mm-hmm. the guy was talking about planting certain plants on the west side of the house or the east side. Right. What? It's it's based upon the sunlight. I the got sun that. Or the I shade. got that part but how do you know and and which plants like what is the difference between I, the east and west i guess one would be morning morning light. suns the other's going to be your afternoon sun so does north and south make a difference yeah yeah oh, because really? yeah because if you figure on the north side it's generally going to be a colder side of the house or like the northwest side really? you know in the winter time the winds come in that direction okay you know oh, what things okay. can tolerate that um yeah, you know, and things like that. But usually, you know, nowadays, if you have a modern car, just start your car and f- figure out which way it's facing. My rear view mirror will tell me which way my car's facing. So what do you put, like, on the north side of the house? North side of the house is usually going to be more shade-tolerant plants that and, and are cold-hardy. Even if uh, there's no shade there? Usually you're going to have your shade only because the house will cover it, that the sun doesn't come directly across that. Oh, okay. uh, you know, your south and southeast is where your sun rises, mm-hmm. and you're, you're setting in that, that west uh, mm. westerly side, the, the northwest side, but usually your north side is your more shaded side of the house. You know, your morning, your south or southeast, you're looking at your morning sun, which is generally so a little easier on a plant than the hot afternoon. Uh, full west, your full west facing is going to be hot but afternoon if you, sun. If, but if the south side of your house was like completely shaded by trees, then... Then you're still, so it, it depends, yeah. Every every place has its own microclimate. Right, everything's a microclimate. But yeah, you, you are looking at, you know, your, your best way of trying to figure out you know, if you you go in the garden center and you're going, I'm looking for a plant to put on the side of my house. They're going to say, Well, is it sunny or shaded? And you go, Oh, wow. Um, yeah, right, right. Which way does it face? Sometimes is easier because people may know. Yeah, yeah. Which way you know the house faces because that might have been um, a selling point when they bought the house. That the you know that the east is into the you know shines into the Florida room in the back of the house kind of thing. So that you know might have been right. one of those kind of things that right. they know right. or they just happen. To, you know, some people do know north and south you know pretty well. So where would I put my apple tree when I plant it? You wanted that out in full sun. That's going to want. So that's full the sun. east side. East, east side or even the the wet you know that 
uh, a full west facing if there's not trees in the way. Just something on that side. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hmm. Because, uh, yeah, you need you need a good amount of sun going on. And you know what I, I heard they're doing in New York City? They're trying to cool it down. I don't know if this is just, you know, new age thinking mm-hmm. or, or what. But they want to put either green, like gardens on top, right, right. or light colors on top. so that You mean on, on roofs and things on like roofs, that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, and, and hey, you can... Like they say, there's a, there's a lot of people who say that with Florida yards and neighborhoods, you know, no lawns, no lawns. But that's not really true. Lawns do play a part in a landscape in a yard. Um, lawns do cool things down. If you ever notice when you you know you're in the city and if you're walking in the city, it's hot. There's a lot of concrete. It holds right. that heat <laughs> in. But as soon as you step into a park. That has some grass, you know. It's cooler. Yeah. You know yeah, the yeah. the dog's gonna run over and go walk on the grass because his little feet are hot, you know. Versus you know the the asphalt or the concrete. So you know grass can be cooling. Trees are cooling. They provide shade. They they increase humidity in areas just because they hold that moisture. They transpire uh, moisture. There's uh, a new Florida license plate that features a tree, and uh, the the slogan on the bottom is "Trees are cool." Oh, I hadn't seen that. Yeah, one. it's another one of those seen, fundraising yeah. specialty right, right. plates. Yeah, hadn't seen that. Oh, what it raises money for, but uh, probably for maybe for uh, planting trees or re, re, you know, replanting trees in the area. Yeah, probably. But, but you know, with with um, yeah, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, you know, the more trees you can put, yeah, you, know, you put in trees. I'm not not a necessarily a tree hugger or anything like that but you know when you have a place that's devoid of vegetation it's going to be hotter it's going to be harsh it it you know trees and and greenery just bring a a softness um a cooling to wherever it is whether or not it be inside the building uh outside of a building or you know how ha- yeah wherever it is it's um so you can you see it? that? Yeah, can you see yeah. the trees are cool? Oh, that's kind of neat. What's it say? It's, does it say what it's with that one's? Purchase a trees are cool specialty license plate today. Preserve Florida's greatest green resource trees. Oh, and by the way, there was another story about that uh, p- p- the, that thing that bug that affects the palm trees. Oh, oh, the the Florida the chapter of the International Society of Arboriculture. That's who it benefits. Oh, okay, okay. Arbor arboriculture. Sorry, I yep. said it wrong. Yeah. But that's all right. Yeah, there was another story yesterday about that uh, pr- uh, bronzing, lethal, lethal bronzing. bronzing, lethal yeah. bronzing. Yeah, yeah, it was has been found in Marion County. Um, I did see that. I'm not sure if that was did part you? of really? it, but yeah, that yeah, I had posted over to the fa- to the in the garden Facebook page. Um, so these ones look healthy right here, right? These look pretty good. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if that when we had lost that one in there, if that was. Yeah, oh, was, that was it? Is, huh? Yeah, may may have been, but then again too. I mean, these trees have been here for a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, so and and where they're at is not do necessarily they have the immune systems the way we do. Not not really. No. Not as not to where they can fight something off and then be immune to that specific bug. No, that's why. Um, that's why the the issue it's you know the next seed because unfortunately it kills the tree so there is no next generation uh-huh. from it right, and it's right. actually damaging the inflorescence which means that you know the flowering part um so you're not getting the seed even from that to see whether or not it could be insects and things like that now they build an immunity and that's what becomes the problem when overuse of pesticides is that plants become or insects become immune to them so you keep going out there if you're constantly you know kill the bug kill the bug kill right, the bug right, right. and you're overdosing and things like that or using too often pesticides you actually are making your problem worse than than better um and also changing from what kind of pesticide um that you're using and it doesn't mean just brand name because many of them, if the chemical ends in T H R I N, that kind of thing, it's all in the same family. Oh, They're all uh, really? permethrin based, which is all, you know, it's all in that same oh, family wow. of chemicals. And if you continue to use the same family of chemicals, they actually, it doesn't really 
Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, it, it doesn't do any better. This is what I mean. It changed from one brand to another brand. It's you got to change from one chemical to an, one a different in a chemical to another. If you would like to call the show, the number is 622-9622. If I could just call your attention to the fact that Carolyn also has a, a Facebook page that's a companion uh, to the uh, radio show. It is in the garden on Facebook, and you'll find it real easy. Just look for the, uh, what do you call it? They have a garden. fairy garden. Fairy uh, garden. Fairy garden as the, as right. the uh, page. Can you see what this fruit that's on the I, I do see this. I kept wondering, what it is. what are you looking that, at? That is a purple mangosteen. Now it says okay. it's a Florida tropical fruit. Now, here, here's the reason I clicked on it. Yeah. I had this thing in my email to make, uh -huh. you can make money selling juice. Okay. And you, you watch the video, uh -huh. and it shows this mangosteen fruit as okay. the, the main ingredient in okay. this fruit, okay? okay? And it's only available from, like, this Himalayan mountains or something. Oh. And I, now I see right here you grow it in Florida, too. Yeah, I was going to say, if it's native, it's a tropical. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little more not, not Himalayan. So. Yeah. Just, just suffice to yeah. say, I didn't, I didn't, <clears throat> didn't invest in the opportunity. No, no, I, yeah, I wouldn't either. <laughs> but um, thinking about edible gardening, <clears throat> coming up, you know, here's one of those mark your calendar kind of things, um, and this is over at One Health Center, which I'm not sure exactly where that's at. It's on 17th Street. Um, Oh, okay. I think that's by 17, the 1714 uh, Southwest 17th Street. I think that's by uh, by the by the hospital. Oh, really? I was no? thinking it was by the uh, bowling alley. Oh, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Yeah, I was thinking that's I, to, I should get, I could say show the map <laughs> and, and look at it, but whatever. It's an edible gardening and herbs. It is It is being hosted by the Master Gardeners. Um, there's no charge for this, but it does ask you to uh, call over to the One Health Center and... Uh, and register for the class. You're going to call Miss Brenda Williams at One Health Center, 352. Brenda. Eight, Brenda. She's a friend. Yeah. I know Brenda. Uh, 812-2059. And that's ju just to register. It's free, but they do want registration, probably because of limited, limited space in there. It doesn't give me any more information, except that it's edible gardening and herbs. So that's what being master gardeners, they're going to tell you how to grow them, um, how to care for them, uh, and you know how to how to put it into your landscape mm -hmm. or or um, window garden things like that. So you know, come with questions. You know, more than pr yeah. Well, problems are questions. A lot, too. Of good, a lot of good information around. There's there's always some good stuff, and of course you got the Micanopy Fall Festival coming up in November. Um, oh, where's my other one? Landscaping with natives. Where's this one at? Landscaping with natives. Not meaning the people, but <laughs> yeah, well, doesn't that conjure a picture? It, it, landscaping yeah, with landscape natives. with natives. Yeah, uh, this one's a Lake County uh, Master Gardener program, so it will be in Tavares. But again, something you know, if you happen to be on the south end of the county or something like that, September twenty first uh, is that one. So that one does have tickets that you will need to get through Eventbrite. Um, but if you take a look around on the and you know the master gardeners, um, if, even if you call your our county extension, and and leave your email address, and they don't bombard you with anything yeah, other yeah, than upcoming good. events is you know what what's going on, and I'm pretty sure that they will give you the ones that are more Marion County, but they may even have the listing of some of the ones in the at least in the surrounding counties. We got uh, a call. Yes, you do. Good That's morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Good morning, Jerry from Ocala. Yeah. I was just wondering, I hear that little saffron grow here. How do you grow it? I hear it's worth more than pot. I'm just wondering. Uh, saffron. Yeah, saffron's I'm expensive. I'm going to hang up and okay. listen. Okay, yeah. Saffron is, is not just a plant. <laughs> it, it's, it's part of a plant. Um, so that's why it is you know on the ounce it's you know as far as i know hundreds of dollars uh on that because it's the threads it's the uh the little pistols of the plant so harvesting them you have to grow you know acres of it in order to um in order to be able to get an ounce of saffron it's uh let's see what we can get do you remember the song by donovan yes i've heard yes I like it, I like it. 
That's not that one. <laughs> not that one. I think he says, I'm just mad about saffron. Yeah. I wonder why he was mad about it. Let me see. She's what? mad about, you know. I'm mad about Saffron. <laughs> what does Saffron's that mean? mad about me. Is it, is it, crazy it, about it. Here, here, crazy here. about Saffron. Hey, listen. Bring back a memory? Yeah, I remember that. I remember this song. I like this song. I hear it every so often. From I'm just mad about Saffron. Saffron's mad about me. <laughs> You know the song, don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, I hear it every so often, yeah, on the, on the radio. It's Mellow Yellow. They call me Mellow Yellow. So Saffron is Yellow? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's I'm what's what makes Yellow Rice and things like that. <laughs> oh, okay. Saffron Rice. Okay. But it is, uh, it's derived from the flower, it's one of the crocuses, which crocus don't grow here in Florida, so sorry. Uh, it's the known as the Saffron Crocus. Um, it's the, the, the threads, the, the, what they call stigmas and styles called threads are collected and dried to be used mainly as a seasoning and coloring agent in food um and it's mostly so it's most costly spice by weight well because it's it's so thin i mean you see a little you know but it but you also doesn't take much to get what you're you know what you're after so but no unfortunately no you're not going to grow it here Hmm. It's it's not something that you know that you're gonna find. What about under like artificial conditions, like a greenhouse or something? Um, yeah, but you know what, you're probably gonna grow you know your little bit. Yeah. You know, you're not gonna sell it. You're not gonna right. grow enough in a in a little small hobbyist kind of thing to to make money. Oh, okay, okay. You know because um, you know it, it's just one of those kind of things that you know in order to get quantity. To, to make you know a you know a living out of that you're looking probably at, at planting an acre under glass and trying to get that cool enough because that's your crocuses or one of those things that come up um, I want to say in very early spring that pop up when there's still snow on the ground so it needs that very cold dormancy or an extended oh, really? dormancy. Wow. For that to come up, yeah, that so. wouldn't grow here then. No, probably not. To uh, you couldn't even have that, that in an f- artificial environment here. It would t- unless you had a I really don't think. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to have something pretty, uh, pretty cold, pretty yeah, um, elaborate, yeah. pretty high tech in order to uh, to grow. You know, to be able to grow it. See if they. See but if they you could move up north, make a fortune, and then have a Florida home. There you go. <laughs> Just have there your, you go. your saffron operation up in North Dakota or whatever. Yeah, I'm trying to see. I was trying to find it. Oh, here we go. How to grow? Because I couldn't. I wasn't wasn't finding it out on the thing. Crocus. Um, do to do to do, do. Okay. When you plant the sa- your saffron crocus bulbs, place them in the ground at about three to five inches deep, and at least six inches apart. About 50 to 60 saffron flowers will produce about one tablespoon of saffron spice. Oh, my gosh. So keep this in mind when figuring out how many to plant. Um, wow. You have another phone call. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Uh, good morning, Larry, Carol Ann. Uh-huh. Uh, I have a little problem here on my lawn. I have nothing but these brown mushrooms. <laughs> uh, I've never seen the color brown before. I know I've had the, uh, you know, they look like a whitish color. Right. But these are all brown. The, the, uh, are, front and back. Are like, they, are they is there round? anything we can do there? Are they round mushrooms, like like a ball? Uh, yeah, some of them are like that. Some okay. of them are a little more flat. Right, it's they're all basically all brown. Sure, they started out white. Uh, the brown ones probably are a, a couple of days old. They're they're puffball mushrooms. Um, all you can do pretty much is, if you particularly if you can get out there, uh, obviously before they turn brown, because once they turn brown, they open and they will poof out the. Um, the spore Spores. to replant yeah. themselves, but you can go around and just collect them up, and you know, hopefully not, you know, get too many of them spreading. But you know, there's nothing you're going to put on the ground to stop them. It's this time of year, the August to September, high high humidity, um, the warm temperatures, the excessive rains. Uh, this year we've been pretty wet, so that's probably a good reason why you've got maybe more that you've ever seen ever before uh, maybe a neighbor had some that um, he well, didn't know about usually the, ones, the mower. usually the ones that I get and I can you know I pick them up because they're not 
engulfing the entire lawn. Right. Uh, there were the white ones, and they were you know, more or less flat. Right. You know, mushroom. Right, with a stem, type. yeah. But these are all brown and, and round. Yeah. Type. They're just, it just, just happens to be one that has has popped up in your yard. There's nothing, there's nothing you can put down to prevent them, just like the regular ones. So I would just go out. They're not going to hurt you to pick them up. And, and, no, uh, I don't. Uh, yeah. You know, I did pick up quite a few, but uh, they seem to fall apart right away when you try to pick them up. That's the other thing that's a pain in the neck. Yeah, yeah, that they, yeah, and they probably if you were to take and you know I put it in a bag so you're not spreading anymore and try to squeeze it, you'll probably see the brown poof. Uh, hence the name puffball. Um, yeah, but that's that's probably what they are. Um, it's again one of those things. There's there's organic material in the landscape. There's yeah you know, in you know underground uh, temperatures and and humidity and moisture levels are just so to where they are gonna pop up oh yeah i know yeah i i spoke to uh, several people and one in particular was uh, born and raised here in ocala and he's even saying the same thing i'm saying that this has got to be the worst summer we've ever had it's it's and been it's been a warm one i know this i uh I, I've even said, you know, because I hate to be the one to complain about the heat, because I hate the cold. But this year has been pretty has been pretty rough. Yeah, but anyway, uh, I was surprised uh, uh, to hear this person say this is the worst summer he's ever experienced, and he's been born and raised here. And uh, you know, I've been thinking that, but I'm only here since 19 December of 1996. Right. So. So, I've been, uh, yeah, I've been know, here since really I've been qualify. here since eighty. <laughs> yeah, I've been here since eighty three, and um, this this summer's been yeah. We've had some extended long term uh, higher temperatures, and uh, uh, you know obviously every time as we get a little older, we don't tolerate the heat quite as much as we used to either. But um, it's. You know, a, a, the kind of thing of, you know, we have had, I think, more days um, with heat indices over 100 degrees. But then again, too, 20 years ago, they never mentioned heat indices uh, on the news, you know, on your weather report. It yeah. was just it was going to be well, when I, 92 when I, the degrees. Year, uh, 96 <clears throat> and a couple of years after that, I think it was four years after that, we had a drought every summer. Uh, we about every that. seven years is usually our cycle is um, to go to dry weather. It's not. It's you know. It's about every seven years is when that usually cycles through, <clears throat> and starting normally in like the winter time is that the the rainy season just takes longer. <clears throat> excuse me to come through. And then not getting quite as much rain. If you notice this year, we have not had not yet a hurricane season. Uh, the the areas off the coast of Africa have not been conducive to bring uh, that cyclonic that you know weather into us. It's not even for formation. And so you know, in honesty, you know, who's to say our rainy season could stop early only because of that, or even the quantity of rain. I know we've had some pretty. Uh, pretty heavy rains mm -hmm. recently especially i mean there's been some roads that have flooded uh out on 441 there was some flooding last week um yeah, dixie county all the schools yeah. were closed yesterday yeah yeah that they, you know flooded. and that's a lot of that a lot of that rain's been coming off the gulf so it's coming from you know coming from elsewhere so you just got a weather chat pattern change and um you know who knows what you know who knows what september october will bring or even through the winter months of what we'll get in rain Carolyn, we're up against the clock, yeah. so uh, again, a great show. Love this show. Thank you for doing this. Hey, my pleasure. My pl and apparently, yes, I guess you can grow saffron in Florida. Maybe we'll talk about it next week. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> uh, like a flash. At yeah, the there we go. All right, we'll be right back. This is WOCA Ocala. Broadcast. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Here is your one-minute news brief. Seven Puerto Rican 